So there's a look at the batteries that are replaced in the forklift last week. Two Legend glass mat deep cycle batteries. Got them from Napa. Now, I originally considered putting two 12 volt car batteries in here because you can pick them up cheaper than what you can get these things. But several people mentioned multiple reasons why that wasn't a good idea. One being that standard car battery doesn't like to be run down below 12 volts and it just totally annihilates them if you do that uh, very much. These don't care where they're deep cycle. Another thing is that the lead acid batteries in here, standard car battery, probably going to vent, corrode all the electronics, and on and on and on. There's lots of reasons why just standard car batteries wasn't a good idea. So these should hold up for quite some time. I'm glad to get these things replaced. There's the little charger where you just plug this thing in. It monitors the voltage and shuts off when they're fully charged. So. So I know a lot of us that's dealt with uh, forklifts and pallet jacks for quite some time have seen the wheels start to come apart. After a while, they get hard and start breaking up. And this forklift is actually from 2003, which to me doesn't sound that old. Heck, I remember 2003, but actually that's been, what, 17 years ago. <laughs> so it's got some age on it. And I noticed the other day while driving this thing around that I was seeing it. Every once in a while, I'd see a little chunk of plastic on the floor, and unfortunately, the drive wheel on this thing, the, made, the steer wheel, is starting to come apart. Now, I, know I priced it, it's not all that expensive, but when you buy an older piece of equipment, you can just expect that there's gonna be some cost to get in, getting it back up and in really good shape. So we're gonna put that drive wheel on it, and I'm gonna hope that all the other ones hold together. Um, but all the parts are still available, available for this thing. But, you know, it's always something. So we got the handles here off of the Dewall mill that actuate the power feeds and there's some problems with these. I was, when I test run that machine, I noticed that it would pop out of gear and didn't feel like a solid engagement when you turn the handle. So let me show you what I found, what's wrong with these. We'll clean them up and hopefully we can repair these. So here's a look at the one with the least wear on it. You can see it has an eccentric 10 millimeter round on this 18 millimeter shaft because this whole machine's metric. Now this one came out of the knee, which was the least used of them all. This one is the Y-axis, the saddle. Hopefully you can see that flat that's worn on that. These are relatively soft compared to what they come in contact with in the gearbox, which is a good thing. I'm glad that these wore and not uh, the part that they mate with. This is the one that's worn the most. It's out of the table. So no wonder it didn't work right. So that's hopefully an easy fix. Hopefully they weld, weld good. But we're going to have to clean them up, prep them, and weld them up and turn them down, get them back into shape.
So this is a pretty nice chuck. The only thing that I don't like about it is that for the key, it takes a square drive, a 3 8 square. And I prefer the hex. They just seem to be a lot quicker to get uh, you engaged. Small uh, complaint, but I like the hex drive better than the square. So there's the factory one. It's got a couple little facets wore in it, but nothing, nothing worth trying to repair. And there's the one I just done all by hand. And there's the one done on the lathe. Turned out good, as good as they need to be anyway. So these weren't hard. They they're soft. They were soft to begin with, so we didn't hurt anything by welding them up. Good job. That was it was pretty rusty really. It looks like the majority of it came off pretty good.
So now I gotta try to untangle this thing. Actually, believe this thing has problems. I think it would, before it would only go up and not down. I gotta give to me. Yeah, it's pulling up. But it won't go down. So I'm gonna take it apart and see what the deal is. That's just the gear reduction side. Huh. Okay, good. It doesn't have to come apart. So I believe the problem with this is there's a little locking dog here that is stuck. And uh, because this lifts heavy things, I'm going to take it apart and clean everything up on it. And no reason not to, to go ahead and do it. So I got everything cleaned up, uh, not perfectly clean, but clean enough for a chain fall. And I'm really, really surprised at how, how intricate this thing is. It's uh, far more complex than what I originally thought. This is the first time I've ever had a chain, chain hoist apart. So cage needle bearings, both of these shells have bearing races in them. And everything looks to be in pretty good shape, although it was really dirty. Um, this thing has a slip clutch involved and everything. I'll show it to you in a little more detail here in just a second, but I'm impressed. This thing's pretty pretty neat the way that it's made.
So here's uh, my best understanding of how it works. So the pull chain, the actual uh, cog that uh, has your other chain on it, just operates this shaft here, which goes in through a gear reduction and turns that central cog that uh, pulls the lift chain. So that's all it is, really. And then the only reason it doesn't spin in reverse when you let off of the pull chain is because it has a small little slip clutch that in no way could hold all the weight that this could pick up. But the reason that it can is because of this gear reduction, right? It, the weight of, the, of whatever you pick up, not enough to spin this gear reduction backwards and slip this clutch. Uh, that's my best understanding, which is pretty neat and uh, something I didn't really understand. Never took the time to disassemble one of these. So got the two dogs free, one was locked up, and I originally thought that was why this thing didn't work, but I don't think that had anything to do with it. I think the slip clutch itself was frozen up because it had some rust, and it wouldn't allow, it just wouldn't allow it to go backwards. So let's get this thing the rest of the way together and try it out. So that's it, it's, it's fixed. Got the clutch maybe a little tight uh, when you pull it to lower it, but I'd rather it be on the, a little bit on the tight side than on the loose side. Just a little bit of uh, chain lube. This is actual chain lube for, uh, for chain hoist, believe it or not. They make such a thing. But just a little, because I don't want I don't want the chain to rust. Obviously, I just cleaned everything and it's completely degreased, but I also don't want it to be completely greasy either. So it's good to pull this out of the junk pile and put it back into the functioning tools. This was, I forget where I got this. This was given to me by somebody. I think it would had sat in the back of a truck forever and rusted up. So it didn't work. And uh, I figured one day I'd fix it. That's been probably three years actually. It's been sitting out under a tarp. So believe it or not, as big as this mill is, it only has a three horsepower motor on the spindle, which is a bit surprising to me. I would think it would be more like five, but I guess three horsepower is plenty if all it's really doing is powering the spindle because it actually has another motor that powers all the feeds. So really that's probably plenty, but I gotta get it off here because the motor bearings in it are extremely bad. Um, I'll get you a little closer, let you uh, hear what they sound like and we'll pull it off there and uh, see what size bearings we need to order. In order to change the belt speeds on this thing, I'm gonna have to have a step stool. Let's see if we can loosen it, take the belt off. Now listen. Hear how rough that sounds? Definitely got a rough bearing. So let's see if we can't disconnect the wires and stuff and get this off here. Hopefully it's not all that heavy. So 
And now, hopefully, this will come off here. get the lift up here and that way I don't have to <laughs> try to pack it down. Definitely doesn't sound healthy. So remember when I had all those flats a few weeks ago? We got another one. This time I got a different way to fix it. Let me show you. So check this out. It is a different way to plug tires. The Stop and Go Tire Plugger Tubeless Tire Repair Kit. This was sent to me by James Williams a few weeks ago, probably a little over a month ago actually, when I had all those flats on my, my car and my wife's car, like five in one week. Could have been more than that, I don't even remember. I tried to block that out of my mind. But anyway, he kind of got a kick out of that. He sent me this different type of tire plug kit, which I think is pretty neat and I want to share it with you. I believe it come from Amazon. He said it works better than the old style uh, rope plugs. So if I can figure out how to operate this thing, we'll try it out. Okay, so it comes with a bunch of plugs. They feel like they got some sort of oil or something on them. You don't use any type of, uh, any type of glue with these. Push that back. Put this mushroom style plug in there. Use this. Push it back in there. And then we have to go out there and prep the tire to accept that plug. So let's go do that real quick and then we'll show the use of this. So I really appreciate that tire plug kit, James, but I was really hoping I'd never have to use it. So we're gonna, it says ring the hole out really well. Take, this is actually the end of that. Take it, put it on this. Put it in there, unscrew it. And then it shows screwing the gun onto that because we already put that little plug in there, right? And it shows this pushes that plug in. You push the button. You pull this out. Well, that's cool. Then it shows using a pair of pliers to pull this about two inches, it says. I guess just to seat it. And that is seated. And it comes with a little, little knife. It's not much of a knife, but whatever. Let's so, so you cut that off flush. And inflate tire to full pressure, then trim stem to tread level. So let's do it the way the instructions say. It had been drove a little bit. You can see that black ring around the tire. 
they get hot on the sidewalls because they flex so much when the tire's low when you're driving. And it causes them to overheat and damages the tire. There we go, tire plugged. If you have any troubles with it, I'll let you know. That's pretty neat, I appreciate that. That was actually really easy to use. So, instructions are straightforward. So, that's nice, it'll go in the car. It comes with far more plugs than you hope to ever use. They balanced it, so that was nice. Cast aluminum. You don't see that much anymore for a fan. They're almost always plastic. Huh. There's a grease fitting under there. Completely hid where you can't reach it. Never had a uh, squirt of grease in it since it's been a motor, except for probably the first day. So there is a way to grease that back bearing. Well, it's not really a way because you have to take that cover off the back. You'd have to take the fan off the back 
in order to access that grease fitting. No seal or anything in there. But then again, there's no access to greasing the front bearing on this thing. The actual one that gets the load from the pulley. Not the best design, really. Not for service, anyway. But this motor is from the 80s, from 1980, and it still works. So that says something, I guess. Windings are a good color. It's not dirty on the inside because it's a sealed motor, so that's good. It has a sealed bearing up front. Clean as a pin on the inside. That back bearing's the one that's real noisy. They're just extremely dry, but we're definitely not not just going to clean them up and reuse them. They're easy enough to replace and cheap enough. So that's what we're going to do. Just order some new ones. So a lot of you guys will remember this big press that I picked up. I don't know four six weeks ago and. A lot of you remember that it doesn't work, and it's been sitting in my shop taking up space for, you know, over a month, and I've ran into several situations where I've needed a press since this thing showed up. So it's time to fix this thing, modify it, do something, or it's going to find a new home, and I'm going to get another press, because I have to have something to use. These motor bearings need pressed off, and uh, <laughs> I'm just tired of this thing sitting in here and not working, so it's time to try to fix it. So the reason I haven't tried to fix this thing before now is just because of time. I haven't had time to try to mess with this thing, and plus it's full of hydraulic fluid, and they're messy. I mean, as far as a, a hydraulic jack, there's really nothing to them. They're about as simple a uh, piece of equipment as it gets. Just some check valves and some pistons, and uh, you know that's about it. And you know, there couldn't be a whole lot wrong with this thing. It just doesn't hold pressure. So I'm assuming that it has, you know, some buildup or something stuck under one of the check valves in it. So we're going to tear it down, clean it up, and see what the deal is. So this is a really simple setup. See, it's just ball check valves is all it is, ball and spring that seat uh, inside this solid steel body here. And we have three ways of pumping up the hydraulic ram over there. And all three of these passages are all hooked together before they come out of this tube and go to the ram. So what I was seeing, the problem with my hydraulic press is that I just couldn't build pressure. I'd build up a little bit, but then it would seep down. So any one of these three check valves that's not operating properly could have caused that problem. And <laughs> just from looking down in this cheap pump, I can tell you that uh, it's, probably, it's probably because of a burr um, from the machining process could be could be just dirt right but I'm seeing some burrs and stuff where they machined the, 
the small holes. I've already cleaned off a few. Uh, so small I can't show it on camera, but you get the idea. Um, you know, these got to be clean. It does not take much to hold this off of a seat and cause you know it to bypass, and that's what I think that I'm seeing. So I'm just going to pull all the check valves out of this and clean them up and hope that it fixes it. So here's something that's extremely handy to have around the shop is these dental type picks in all shapes and sizes. I mean, I've used all of these at one point or another and they're cheap. You can buy these for a little or nothing in kits. Wow, this thing is just amazingly dirty on the inside. It could just be because it's set for so long outside, I, I don't know. But this is the hydraulic fluid vessel, or the reservoir, and it's all welded together, so there's no way to get in there and clean it out. The, all that looks like to me is just a piece of square uh, tubing that they've welded onto the hydraulic body. I'm gonna have to cut that off, the top off, and then clean it up and re-weld it back on. It's the only way to clean it up that I know of. I wonder why it didn't work. There's no way you'd have got that clean without cutting that apart. So if you have an old hydraulic press, I suggest you change the fluid in it. Especially if you have one of these. Looks like they, looks like they dumped old used waste motor oil in it. So all the parts got a thorough bath in the parts washer. I also inspected all the valves and the seats to make sure that none were scuffed or damaged in any way. I didn't see a lot wrong with this other than it was really dirty. I blew out the valve body or the, the hydraulic body here with compressed air really well to make sure all the passages were clean. Removed any burrs that I seen from the machining process because none of that was done when this thing was made originally. So just get it all back together fill it up full of hydraulic fluid, hope that this thing works. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. Well, that'll work. It's not beautiful, but it is functional. About out of shielding gas. So I think that I've got this thing fixed now. It, I'm glad to have it press to use because I need it to get the bearings off of that motor for the do-all mill. And I'd been putting this thing off to the side, obviously, to because I didn't want to deal with it. I knew it was going to be a pain and oily. And it was worse than I thought. I would have never thought that it would have that much debris inside of a sealed tank. I think maybe just the oil and stuff broke down in there, but you know, who knows? Maybe they filled it up with just garbage, whatever would work to get this thing sold. You know how that goes. Um, but it functions now. I do have a leak at this air cylinder at the bottom. Uh, when I get the pressure up high, it starts seeping here and starts bleeding off a bit, uh, but I don't have a wrench to tighten that. But other than that, I believe that it's repaired. Oh, <laughs> uh, not the best unit ever, but surprisingly simple. Like if you have problems with a hydraulic pump of some sort, Manual pump, take it apart, check it out. You'd be surprised how easy they are to work on. Uh, 
balls and springs in a steel body that direct flow in a certain way. Take it apart one piece at a time, note where they go. And I mean, it's hard to mess up, to be honest. So, glad to have this to where I can use it. Now, I want to press that bearing off. work. That's the bad thing about having a press that's so large is the distance and the length of your press plate's got to be got to be pretty long and if you're trying to get up under something thin it doesn't give much strength and they're bowing. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to come up with a different way I think. So I shortened the distance where these are supported by putting it on these inner ribs. Let me try that. There we go. I really need to pick up one of the claw type bearing pullers. I've got a harmonic balancer puller, but and you can rig it up to make it do this, but oh but a bearing puller would be better. All right, that's looking pretty good actually. Um, everything's clean except for the stator. I'm not going to put it in the wash tub. I don't want to risk uh, messing up the coatings on those windings. That uh, solvent is pretty tough on paint, so uh, yeah, I don't know how to react to this. I'm going to take it easy on the uh, on the stator. Now there's our back bearing on the motor, and our front bearing or load bearing. It's almost always bigger on the on the output side of the motor. And it's a double rubber lip seal. People always ask, how do you get the right bearing? And I had just always measure them up. So these are metric. So our major OD is 62 millimeter. Our ID, probably 30. Yep, 30 millimeter on the ID. And then our width, 16 millimeter. So those are the si that's the size bearing we need in a double rubber lip seal roller bearing. So just go on your online auction site and they're plenty to choose from. So the back bearing, smaller, 52 on the major OD, ID, 25, and then the width is 15. So that's easy enough. I'll order those up, clean the stator, and be ready to go back together. Uh, I kind of enjoy working on electric motors. Although, to get the bearings off of this one, I had to fix my hydraulic press, which was a pain, but not, not really a bad thing. I'm glad to have it fixed. Looks good. So I guess that's it this week. Made a lot of good progress. Got the motor off the do-all mill. Got the bearings out and ordered. Got my hydraulic press fixed, which I've been putting off for quite some time. Uh, also got the chain hoist fixed that I'm hoping to lift this knee off of this machine with. This week's also my daughter's 18th birthday. It's hard to believe that I've got a young daughter that's 18 years old. She was four pounds when she was born, so me and my wife are going to, and things have changed, me and my wife are going to spend some time with her this week, um, and I'm excited about that. Um, next week, I've got something to share with my viewers. A lot of them will be extremely happy to see this again. Um, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. I'll show you next week. So that's it. Huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project, viewers, patrons, subscribers. You get the idea. 
And that's it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. Waiting.